I'm going to show you how to tie my version of one of the best known and uh, definitely the most versatile flies of all time, uh, the Clouser Minnow. Uh, this is a great pattern for sea run cutthroat trout, particularly here in Puget Sound, but also excels for pink and coho salmon. In this variation, the fly is tied on a tube instead of directly onto the hook, meaning that you can position that hook point much further back than in the traditional clouser. And that's a distinct advantage when you're using, when you're targeting fish like coho, which are well known for short striking, where they're just nipping at the tail of the fly. So this summer, I've been fishing this pink tube clouser pretty much exclusively for both resident and migratory coho salmon and for the pink salmon which run in the sound every two years including this year when we seem to have had a better than usual run. Now I can honestly say I've hooked virtually every one of the salmon that have bitten on this fly even though I've lost a good many of them subsequently given that they're either you know just very strong fish and that we're using barbless hooks. In these clips I'm showing I'm using either a floating line and letting the weight of the fly itself take it down into the strike zone or I'm using a Rio outbound short line with a floating running line and a head comprised of 15 feet of hover and 15 feet of intermediate. So either setup has been working really, really well. Um, between my fly line and the fly, I'm just using a nine foot leader made of straight 12 pound test maxima. Uh, now I like to fish my clouses with a relatively stro uh, slow strip for pink salmon let's say one foot pulls every second and I go just a little bit faster than that when the coho are around. I see a lot of fishermen using a very fast hand over hand retrieve uh, but that hasn't worked as well for me. I think that you lose a lot of the jigging action when you do that and in my view uh, that's one of the things that make this such a killer pattern. So that's one of the pinks I caught. A couple more pinks. That's a nice coho. So let's get started on this. Uh, I'm going to tie with salmon in mind. So that's going to be about three and a half inches long. And the first requirement is a length of clear poly tube from HMH. This is the small size which has an outside diameter of 330 seconds. And I've cut a piece of that which is uh, an inch and a half long but obviously you can play around with the length if you want a bigger fly or place your hook point nearer the tail and the first thing I'm doing is just gently heating the front end until it mushrooms out a little bit and this is going to prevent the thread wraps from slipping off the finished fly so I'm going to insert the mandrel which comes with my adapter kit and just press it against the end while it's still warm now one of the things, annoying things, that can happen with this type of adapter is that the tube will spin when you're wrapping material onto it. So to avoid that happening, uh, after you take your mounted tube and place it in the adapter, you need to firmly press the front end of the mandrel on your work surface at the same time that you tighten the, the little thumb wheel that locks the mandrel in place. And if you do that, I promise you, your tube's never going to spin. So I'm going to just secure that whole attempt assembly into my vise. And for my thread, I've got some, uh, got some white uni thread in 6O. And I'm going to attach that at about the place that I'm going to put the eyes, which is, I would say, about a third of an inch from the front. And then I'll form a thread base. And it's important to leave about half an inch clear at the back end and that's where the hook adapter is going to go. So I'll cut away that excess and advance the thread back to the front. I like to use the Spirit River Realize Plus and I like the red ones with the black pupil. These ones are 3 30 seconds inches uh, diameter. If I was going to make a smaller fly for cutthroat trout I'd likely use the 5 30 seconds size. So when I've got that situated the way I want, I'm just going to put a few initial wraps in there. Like so. And then I'm going to add just a tiny drop of super glue. 
as an insurance. When I've got that on, I'm going to make uh, a lot more figure eight wraps directly into the glue and some front to back wraps as well. Then I'll make a few helicopter turns just to lock it in place. And you get a much more secure attachment to the tube than if you're trying to attach eyes to a hook. Okay, now I've cut myself a small bunch of white bucktail which is unstacked uh, to give it a natural taper and I'm going to measure that and cut it so that it actually fits behind the eyes. Now I'm not going to tie the bucktail over the top of the eyes as you would in, in the traditional Clouser recipe over here because uh, that puts it under a lot of tension and the flies aren't as durable. Here's a fly I've fished for a while and caught some fish on and it's, it's perfectly good except that the hairs are braided from teeth or rocks or sand and the fibers have split at that tension point. So I've seen some really good YouTube videos on Clouser design by Nick Clayton and I've shamelessly borrowed this step and the subsequent one from him so he deserves the credit for that. So I've attached behind the eyes and I'm going to um, wrap over the bucktail back to that half inch point from the back. Now I'm going to take a length of flat diamond braid in pearl. I'm going to tie that in at the point where the uh, where the bucktail leaves the tube. And I'll secure it along the length of the body. Like that. and I'm going to skip my thread to the front of the eyes. Now I'm going to create a nice belly for the fly uh, with overlapping turns of the braid. And, and this really, I think, makes it look like, uh, like the belly of a bait fish. And when I get to the eyes, I'm going to wrap the braid diagonally in one direction and then in the opposite direction and then back once more between the eyes and finally I'm going to secure that right in front of the eyes put a few turns behind it and in front of it trim away the waist piece and then I'll just neaten that up a little bit Now, I want to change the color of my thread to match the uh, to match the wing. So I'm going to say goodbye to the white and just give that a whip finish. Get rid of that. I'll turn the fly over in my vise. So now I'm, I'm working on what will be the, the top side. I'm going to attach my pink thread. And I happen to just have some Vivas 10 aught here. And I'll attach that right behind that little mushroomy end. And make myself a new thread base in front of the eyes. Keep that going back. And now I'm going to make uh, a lateral line with a bit of flash. And I'm using two different colors of crystal flash. Smolt blue and UV pearl. And I've got four strands of each of those here. And I'm going to fold those over my thread. and then turn that up to the, the top and then tie the flash down along the top of the tube and then 
I'll cut those just a little bit longer than the white bucktail. For the wing of the fly I've got a bunch of pink bucktail and I want this to be a little bit shorter than the white and I want to be able to tie it in uh, right behind the little lip at the front end of the tube. So I'll transfer that length and cut it. Make one loose turn and then pull up hard on it. And then I'll secure that bunch down at the front and all the way back to the eye. And I like to top wing with a very small amount of a darker color. In this case I've got dark blue and that is going to give the, uh, the impression of a dorsal surface. And I also, you know, I'll use dark olive for this. I'm going to make that little tiny clump of uh, blue bucktail the same length as the pink. And really this is an optional step. Uh, but I, I like the way it looks in the water. So I'll tie that in across the top. And now I'll build the head up. And uh, look how much more streamlined that is without having the white bucktail coming over the eyes and making a big bulky nose. Okay, I think that'll do. So now I can whip finish it. remove the pink thread. I'm going to use a thin UV resin to strengthen first of all that diamond braid along the belly and between the eyes and I can extend that coat into the nose. a bit more on the uh, the underside of the nose here or the top end give that a final cure take the adapter out of the vise and then just pull the fly off, off the mandrel. Now the last thing to do is to take about a half inch piece of the adapter tubing that comes in the kit and I'm going to slip that over the back of the tube so that about a half of it stands proud and that's going to take the hook. Okay. Now for salmon I like to use a uh, size 2 octopus hook and I also really like these owner SSW hooks in size 4 or size 6 for when I'm rigging these flies for cutthroat. So imagine I've threaded my leader through the tube and I've tied on my hook and it's uh, it's going to sit in there like that. There you go. Other side to the eyes. Now as for knots, um, you don't want to tie uh, you don't want to tie a clinch knot like this or a uni knot or a palomar because the knot's going to get in between the eye of the hook and the end of the tube 
and it's not going to make a very sound connection. Instead you want to tie a snell knot so the leader emerges from the eye with nothing in the way. And if you don't know how to tie a snell knot, uh, just Google it. So there's the tube clouser for you. Many thanks for watching and I do hope you enjoyed the video.